Welcome in. Thanks for joining us for the latest WHHI Daily News, where we strive to bring you more low country news more often. I'm Bob Stevens. Buford County's new full-time administrator has made a mark in his first couple of days on the job. Michael Moore issuing a warning to the Lowcountry Ferry Company that it needs to provide a proper backup ferry between Defusky Island and the mainland during the busy summer months and hasn't done that yet, violating its contract with the county. Now, the county and more hasn't said when that neglect could cause the ferry service any fines or even the cancellation of its contract. 600 Defusky residents count on the ferry and have been complaining of bad service since Lowcountry Ferry took it over back in January. The 4th of July did not have a perfect ending for all of us. Buford police still investigating a Thursday night shooting at the Ashley Point Apartments before the fireworks went off. The victim was treated on the scene, then taken to Buford Memorial, then sent on to Charleston for further treatment. That victim or a suspect in the shooting have not been identified. Not that we are, now that we're through the big holiday, we can let you know that yes, Governor McMaster did sign the state's new $14.5 billion budget for the next 12 months, though he did issue 21 vetoes that cut about $2.3 million from the budget. Mostly small stuff for businesses with shaky financial reporting. The $2.3 million, about a hundredth of 1% of the overall budget, so insignificant that the state legislature is not even coming back into session to try to override any of those vetoes. So within the budget, with no tax increase, the state's top tax rate goes down, teachers and state employees get pay raises, and there's enough money for higher education to freeze tuitions for a sixth straight year. President Biden's issues extend far outside the Beltway as his mental acuity is now affecting the 1st District Congressional race. Democratic candidate Michael B. Moore is calling on Biden to withdraw from the race to, quote, carve a path forward for Democrats to keep the White House, end quote. Moore says his party needs to, quote, come together to identify and rally around a new nominee, end quote, though he does praise Biden's impact as a public servant. His opponent, Congresswoman Nancy Mace, has taken everything a step further. She told a conservative new network over the weekend she thinks Biden should step down from the presidency altogether. And Hilton Head Island residents and viewers of the Land Trust's Raptor Camp have been following the birth and growth of the owlets who hatched in early February. But recent sightings are showing one of the two, either HH5 or HH6, missing and presumed dead. The carcass of a juvenile female great horned owl was found near the nesting site recently. The young owls were not banded, so land trust officials don't know for sure, but they do strongly suspect they have found the missing owl. The Center for Birds of Prey in Awanda believes the, it, the owl ingested some poison intended for rodents. For more details on these stories and other low country news, we invite you to visit the sources listed on your screen. Time to update sports. Justin Jarrett has the latest on Low Country Sports over the 4th of July weekend. Hey, it's time for Last Night in the Loco on WHHI, powered by LocoSports.com. The Diamond Youth Baseball State Tournaments got underway this weekend, and the boys from Hilton Head are still carrying the banner for the Loco. The Island boys made it through the first two days unscathed in the 8-and-under coach pitch tournament in Walterboro, and the 10 and under minors championship in West Columbia, setting up key matchups in the championship bracket this evening. Hilton Head's eight and under All-Stars routed their first two opponents Saturday, clobbering host Colleton County 15 to nothing and stomping St. George 16 to three. And they held on in a barn burner Sunday, beating Westminster eight to seven to advance to a showdown with fellow unbeaten Blythewood this afternoon with another game on tap later tonight, win or lose. The 10U Hilton Head team squeaked out a 5-4 win over Greer in Saturday's opener and blanked North Myrtle Beach 2-0 on Sunday to stay in the winner's bracket. They'll face either Midland or Monk's Corner at 7.30 p.m. tonight. And the 12 and under Ozone team is still alive. After dropping its opener 1-0 to Hanahan, Hilton Head survived with a 5-4 win over St. George on Sunday and will try to avoid elimination this evening against North Myrtle Beach. The May River girls golf team will rep the Loco at the PGA National High School Invitational in Frisco, Texas this week, and they'll look to follow the lead set by Hilton Head Preps boys, who finished second against a field of state champs, 
from around the country in last week's Boys Invitational. Love to see it. Check in with us at 9 p.m. tonight for the Loco Sports Lowdown to get updates on all this local sports news and much more. For Loco Sports and WHHI, I'm Justin Jarrett. Until next time, go Loco. Now with a look after our week of the fourth weather with Maria Soden, sponsored by Low Country Crawl Spaces. Thanks, Bob. Yep, so taking a look ahead, it does look like after all that sunshine this weekend, we are going to be seeing the return of thunderstorms this week. So taking a look at Tuesday, it's going to be cloudy with widely separated thunderstorms throughout the afternoon and going into the evening. Hillness of high 88, a low of 77. Bluffton's a high 89, a low of 75. And Buford's of a high 89 and a low of 77. The sunrise for Tuesday is going to be at 624 and sunset's going to be at 832. Taking a look at the tides, low tides can be at 726 a.m. and high tides can be at 1219 p.m. Taking a look into the rest of the week, Wednesday it's going to be cloudy with scattered showers and thunderstorms throughout the day and going into the evening. Highs will be in the 90s, lows in the 70s. Thursday we're going to see thunderstorms in the morning. They should be clearing up by the afternoon, but then we're going to see the thunderstorms return into the evening. Highs will be in the 90s, lows in the 70s. And then come Friday it's going to be cloudy again with scattered showers and thunderstorms throughout the day, but it should be clearing up by the evening. Highs will be in the upper 80s, lows in the 70s. That's it for your low country crawl space weather. Let's hit it back to the desk. Busy week as we get back to work after the 4th. We'll have much more of the WHHI Daily News right after this.